My mom was, from a very young age, uh, a bit of a rabble rouser. I know that her parents were involved in union organizing and protesting in New York City in the 30s and 40s, and they brought Jackie along to a lot of those demonstrations. From that activism, what grew was a healthy interest in taking part in various social movements in the country. She picked up guitar at a young age, and uh, that led her to her interest in folk music. Mom played with the Almanac singers off and on, and that kind of led to an involvement with Pete and with uh, other people, with Woody. Uh, Cisco Houston, and then the Weavers were formed. Freddie Hellerman, Lee Hayes, Pete Seeger, and Ronnie Gilbert were the ongoing members. My mom sang with them early on and introduced Ronnie to the rest of them. The Weavers were blacklisted in the 50s as a result of Joe McCarthy's antics. That's something that my mom felt very strongly about and she spent a lot of time fighting for those people. Jackie and Joe met in uh, Washington, D.C. when uh, she was working for the Communist Party. After my dad passed away in 1968 uh, from kidney disease, my mom kind of went into a big funk and she didn't really come out of it until 1970. My sister's husband at the time, Donald, was an engineer for a radio show at WRPI. It was a show that was playing sort of roots-oriented Americana music. He felt like he was a bit out of his depth, so he asked Jackie to help him out and it became her show. Mostly folk for mostly folks for 25 years. I was, I think, three when Bob Dylan came and stayed at our house, and that was because he was playing at Cafe Lena. My mom was instrumental in helping start Cafe Lena in Saratoga. Lena Spencer was a good friend. My mom and I believe my dad helped to, to start the cafe. So Cafe Lena was born in Saratoga Springs at One Phyla Street, still going strong. Back in those days, it wasn't a music business, it was just music. There was very little business involved, very little pay. That's part of the reason why we met so many musicians and had so much involvement in the cafe. That's kind of how Bob Dylan wound up staying at our house. We got a call from Lena and said, hey, go pick up this kid and his girlfriend at the bus station. They need a place to stay. He stayed with us uh, that time, and I think a couple of other times, gave my dad a lot of access to him. He wound up shooting a lot of photos over the next five years. My dad spent a lot of time in New York City, drove down almost every weekend to hang out at the jazz and blues, at the jazz and blues and folk clubs, and uh, amassed quite, uh, quite an inventory of photos of just about every jazz, blues, and folk singer you can think of in the 60s. Through that time, my mom was his secretary and organized all his work. So from 61 through 68 when he died, and even after, my mom administered the photo collection. She was only five, one and a quarter, but she really stood tall in, in the upstate New York area in the folk scene and, 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 and beyond, really. I think her legacy is that she just cared so much about people. She never said no to anybody. She never had anything to give, but what she did have, she shared. That's pretty amazing. She wore a, a vest a lot, which was covered with buttons, different buttons that expressed her political views. A lot of buttons on it. <laughs> she always wore this. And uh, the buttons change from time to time, but they're all pretty radical representations of her political views. Yeah, I miss her all the time. It's been 17 years, I still miss her. If the cause was just, she was willing to do whatever she had to do to, to go to the wall for someone, whether it was somebody in her immediate family or whether it was somebody she didn't know, but she saw being affected, it didn't matter.